necessity, we accept the body out of necessity. What is that necessity? The necessity to fulfill our material desires. The necessity to fulfill our desire to act independently and separately from the Lord. But the Lord, on the other hand, the Supreme Personality of God and Krishna, He accepts bodies and manifests various transcendental bodies. All of His bodies are completely transcendental and eternal. What is the necessity? What is the need? What is the priyogen? His necessity is nothing but praying. For Him it's Leela. He accepts various bodies to enjoy rasa, for enjoyment. There is no ignorance there. There is full cognition, full awareness. He's accepting all of the different bodies and manifesting all the different bodies and avatars for the purpose of Prem Leela. To relish Prem with all of his various parts and parcels and his various energies. Shakti and Shaktiman. The enjoyer and the enjoyed. So as the Purusha avatars, as the Leela avatars, as the Yuga avatars, and the Guna avatars, and all the different avatars the Lord manifests, they're all simply, He accepts those out of the necessity of love, praying. There's no, he doesn't accept them because of the force of exploitation. But the conditioned souls of jivas, they accept bodies, big and small bodies in this world, because of the desire to exploit, to this, the desire to be God, and to imitate God, and exploit the resources of the Lord. But the Lord accepts bodies, various transcendental avatars and incarnations and vigarhas and rupams, such that Ananda Rupams, to exchange in rasa and leela, to give, not to take, to share, not to exploit, to expand, not to contract. This is, a, this is what the Prabhupada is saying. When was, Pariksha wants to know, what is the significance? How can we understand something here? So it's a matter of the purpose, the intention. The jiva, the conditioned souls accept the body, the Lord accepts bodies. This is being discussed here. But what is the intention? What is the purpose? Lord Sankarshan, Lord Sankarshan, he, within himself, he has some desire for some variety of leela. So he goes to the Karna Ocean. And Lord Sankarshan goes to the Karna Samudra. And there he manifests a huge form known as Mahavishnu. And it's called Yoga Nidra. The Yoga Nidra is where he enters into Swapna Vilas with Lakshmi Devi. Yoga Nidra doesn't mean ignorance. Nidra means sleep. Nidra means sleep for us or ignorance. But Yoga Nidra means in that dreaming state, in that blissful state of happy repose, where Lord Vishnu combines with his eternal consort in divine union or yoga. And Yoga Nidra. And they're floating and relaxing on that wonderful bed of Shesha. I mean, on the wonderful waters of the Karna Samudra. And they're engaged in Leela. This is Prem Leela of Mahavishnu and Lakshmi. And while he's enjoying that rapturous, rapturous embrace of Goddess Lakshmi on the Karna Samudra, so many causes come into play from that causal ocean, the Karna Samudra. He is just breathing and relishing the divine Yoga Nidra, intimate Prema Lingata of his divine eternal devotee and consort, Lakshmi Devi. And from the pores of his body, from the pores of his body, billions and billions of universes are emanating. And then he's thinking, oh, such a wonderful thing has happened for my body. Let me also enter. Oh, look what, I, look what I've created. Like a child, he takes a, 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 a bottle of soap and he stirs it up and he makes bubbles. And he, makes, he gets a little plastic ring and he sticks it in the soap little ring like this and you blow it and you make a bubble from the soap and the bubbles go in the air and you oh I created these bubbles oh they're dancing in the rays of the sun and they're shining with different rainbow colors now then he develops a desire to play with those bubbles so he tries to his friend he tries to catch one in his hand or he, he goes around like this following the bubble or he blows the bubble or he takes a pin and breaks it because it's his bubble and he wants to play with it so Mahavishnu, all these bubbles called Anda, Jaganda, these egg-like universes are emanating from the pores of his body. And then he develops a desire to play with those universes, to have Leela there. So he enters those, he expands himself and enters those universes as Garbhadakshay Vishnu, 
which is, was being mentioned as purport. And there he lies at the bottom of the universe on Balaram's expansion of Shesha. And then he, he perspires and his perspiration fills half of that universe with water. It's known as the Garbodak Ocean. Garba means womb and Udaka means water. Garbodak. The water that comes from Garbodak Shai Vishnu. And then he becomes, Garbodak Shai Vishnu, he becomes the, the super soul of that universe. He's a super soul of that one universe, Garbodak Shai Vishnu. Just like Mahavishnu, who's sometimes called Karna Dakshai Vishnu, who's lying on the Karna Ocean, he becomes, he is a super soul of the aggregate, of the sum total of all the universes, the super soul of all the universes is Mahavishnu. And the super soul of one universe is Garbhadakshai Vishnu. So now he's, he's lying there, and then he's thinking, oh, let's have a nice leela. I'm lying in this water. Let me, let me produce, let me have some rasa. But to have rasa, to engage in rasa, to exchange, to enjoy pleasure, to engage in leela, requires two. It takes two to tango. Tango was a dance in the 1920s. The tango. You can't tango by yourself. In other words, you have to have a dance partner to dance with. So pleasure, someone can relish some pleasure within himself if he's not Maram Muni. But generally, pleasure implies variety. Persons. So now, this Vishnu, Garbhadakshay Vishnu, from within himself, from his navel, this beautiful lotus flower grows. Beautiful lotus flower grows from his navel. And then he's thinking, oh, how wonderful. And then the man of, then Brahma, then in that bud, first that lotus flower appears as a bud. And inside the bud of that lotus flower is the collective karma of all the living entities in that universe. This is described in the, in the Prabhupada's books. The collective karma, just like inside of a lotus, there's a bud of a lotus flower, but inside, ultimately, that lotus flower will produce seeds. So the seeds are like the seeds of karma. So inside the bud of the lotus flower is the collective karma of all the living entities in that particular universe are stored there in the karma kosh. This is the karma kosh, the treasury of karma. This bud of the lotus flower is appearing from the navel, Padmanabh, from the navel of Garbhadakshay Vishnu, the sum total of the fruit of activities. It's very interesting. Now, gradually that lotus flower opens and as it opens it illuminates the universe with a effulgence with a jyoti Padma jyoti the effulgence of that lotus flower and then and so Garbhadakshay Vishnu he said oh look at what a nice thing I'm doing I made this nice lotus flower and now and, I, and it, has, it has beauty has function but ultimately it's all for Leela it's all for Leela he's Purusha avatar this is a Purusha avatar there's three Purusha avatars Mahavishnu and Garbhadakshay Vishnu and Shiradakshay Vishnu. So now, to, to increase the rasa, bing, Brahma appears, Lord Brahma. Brahma doesn't know. He, he doesn't know what to do, or who he is, or where he is. He doesn't understand anything. He's sitting there. So what does he do? He, he goes like this. He goes like this. And he goes like this. And when he looks in four directions to try to understand who he is or where he is, he manifests four heads. That's how Brahma gets his four heads. When he start, when he appeared on the lotus flower, he had one head. But as he turned his glance in four directions, then he attained four heads. A head for the north, the south, the east, and the west. So now he has four heads, and he still doesn't know what's going on. But Brahma has four heads, can't figure out what's going on, even though he can see everything in four directions. Like sometimes we have an expression, you should have eyes in the back of your head. If you have eyes in the back of your head, you could see what's, what's coming up behind you and, and protect yourself from possible danger from the backside. Eyes in the back of your head. And he had eyes on all sides. Still he couldn't figure out what was going on. Understand. So then he began to search. Sounds interesting. Search the, the pilgrim search. Here he is, a pilgrim, lost and appearing in the wilderness, darkness all around. He has some mental faculties, an ability to conceive and understand, but he has no answers. He's bewildered. Where to go? Where to turn? So then he begins to search. 
I must find out who I am. Why am I here? What is the purpose? So the, the appearance of Brahma and his evolution and consciousness and his, dis- self dis- his journey of self-discovery, one of our Guru Dei's books is entitled, The Journey of Self-Discovery Began. The first journey of self-discovery is de- being described right now, here. It started with Lord Brahma. So we have one head and we think we figured it all out. I know everything, man. I have a PhD.